Okay, so let's start. Welcome to our webinar today on cutting crime impact, making the case for a community policing approach lessons from the Lisbon model. My name is Margot Molkenbuer. I'm very happy to be your host today on behalf of the DPTE, the Institute for Applied Prevention Research at the German Prevention Congress. And today's webinar is the third one in our webinar series in which we focus on several aspects of the EU funded project a Cutting Crime Impact, where 12 partners developed very practical tools for police crime prevention. And um, the first topic we, we wanted to address in this webinar series is or was and is a community policing and therefore in the last webinar we learned something about the community policing approach in England and I got to know a tool which improves um, the handover processes of police officers who leave their position and um, need to hand over their their knowledge and their experiences in a special neighborhood or beat to the following police officer. And today we will learn something about the community policing approach in Portugal, especially in Lisbon. And um, I think the approach is quite established there since many years. But nevertheless, the Lisbon Municipal Police is facing some challenges. And um, yeah, they will talk about that today. As speakers today, I'm very happy to welcome Simone Tulumelo and Monica Sinis. Um, Simone Tulumelo is Assistant Research Professor at the University of Lisbon at the Institute of Social Sciences and will speak about 10 to 15 minutes and introduce the topic. And then Monica will go on. She's Head of the Prevention security and international relations of the Lisbon Municipal Police and will speak mainly about her work in the Cutting Crime Impact Project. And I'm also very pleased again to welcome Dr. Dagmar Heinrich. Uh, she's supporting us today with the moderation of the webinar and she will discuss your questions and your comments in the end with the speakers. She's a research fellow in the Cutting Crime Impact Project at the University of Salford. To ask questions, you can find a small question mark in a speech bubble, and um, then a small window will open where you can type in your questions. And I really want to invite all of you to do this and to participate actively if you want already during the presentations, because then Dagmar can already read them and then we will discuss them in the end. So before we start, just a very brief note that the webinar will be recorded. So you are able to watch it afterwards if you want. And then I would like to give the floor to Simon and wish all of you an interesting webinar. Hi, hello, thanks Margot for the nice introduction. Thanks for, for the invitation, for being in this nice series of, of seminars. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna try to do in, in the next 10 to 15 minutes is to uh, introduce the, this, the talk by, by Monica on, on the specific challenges of community policing nowadays in Lisbon, but trying to put the, the case of Lisbon in conversation with what are the classical problems, issues and challenges of community policing. Actually, in the previous uh, webinar, uh, Dr. Megan O'Neill has provided an interesting uh, overview and I will refer to the challenges that she, she emphasized. And I mean, I've been doing field work in Alta de Lisboa, which is the first place, the first neighborhood where community policing was actually developed in its present form in, 
in Lisbon and then com being comparing it with uh, literature on anglophone examples of community policing and particularly with uh, the case of policing in Memphis in, in Tennessee and to be clear I'm not a police scientist I'm an urban scholar so I'm interested in how policing is part of a continuum uh, made of urban policy and so I try to think about policing within a wider field for instance, within the perception and during the last few decades, especially in Anglophone countries, the growth of policing has often been detrimental to other social policies, which in and of itself may have been a problem both for prevention writ large and for police work uh, in and of itself. And that's where I think community policing is an interesting lens to think at the relation between policing and urban and social policy writ large. And so starting with those criminal, uh, not criminal, critical dimensions of community, usually identified with especially Anglo cases of community policing, as Megan O'Neill did in the last webinar. She started from the person, there is not really a definition of community policing out there. And for me, that's absolutely true. And that's probably also one of the reasons why the term community policing has been used to justify and to define forms of policing which have nothing to do with community and with what is the theoretical rationale of community policing, including very aggressive forms of order maintenance, especially in Northern American cities. And in this sense, I think that the issues with community policing may have to do with the fact that police work is not about solving problems as per community policing rationale. And so the fact that we know that there are, there are lots of organizational challenges for community policing because where prevention policies happen are other public departments. And yet, within the framework of community policing, police officers act as street level bureaucrats. And so this is where, in my opinion, police can actually cooperate and participate in social prevention. And since one of the problems which is identified here is above all organizational, the institutional constraints for community policing, the fact that training of, for, of police forces is very different from what the needs for community policing are. The fact that police evaluation is very often made through different stats, arrests and so on and so forth. And of course the United States case is, is paradigmatic. I think it's important to question to what extent and how can community policing happen and work with its rationale in police departments. And here is where I think that the case of community policing in Lisbon is interesting and peculiar. In Portugal, where in, in Lisbon, uh, community policing is managed by the municipal police, which is not a criminal police force. A municipal police can not make arrest, is not a criminal police. It's above all concerned with uh, code enforcement, etc. And in this sense, though police officers are, they come from uh, general police and they are assigned to, to municipal police, they, when they are in municipal police, they work in an environment which is not the traditional environment of criminal police forces. And so this peculiarity of the Portuguese institutional arrangement for me was one of the preconditions for, that allowed Monica Dinis, who started to work on community policing, to actually build a space for community policing where officers were not involved, in, were not committed to make arrests and the traditional activities that often are in conflict with the goals of community policing. And uh, in this sense, the second issue that Megan O'Neill has raised uh, last month 
was the fact that community policing very often uh, relies on a conceptualization of community that is quite problematic. The idea of a sort of territorially bounded, cohesive context whereby these social groups can cooperate with policing. In this sense, I think one of the needs for actually thinking about community policing is problematizing this idea of community as something that, uh, that is common in a territorial context. Actually, in fact, the regional, uh, uh, the etymological meaning of community comes not from what is in common, but from the Latin cum bonus, which means what the responsibility that uh, people have in common. And so in this sense, even in the regional concept of community, cohesion, homogeneity is not a, com a component of community. So can we work on community policing not through thinking a homogeneous community, but a diverse, internally conflictual community within which policing can cooperate to the goals of social prevention. And this is where I believe that police officers, a street level bureaucrats can actively contribute to precisely linking different groups, but also different institutions that cooperate on, on, on the ground, looking at institutional needs and structural conditions, individual needs and the environment of organizations and institutions in any given place. And once again, this is where I find uh, the effectiveness of Lisbon's community policing. Lisbon's community policing in Alta de Lisboa was born from a group, a community group, which is above all a place for uh, meeting of the various institutional and non-institutional actors that exist in Alta de Lisboa. There have been actually issues in time and some uh, and at times, you know, community representatives like neighborhood representatives have been less present. But in fact, this did not necessarily meant that community policing didn't work because where it actually worked was in putting together uh, municipal, the municipal authority, health services, uh, local NGOs, et cetera, et cetera, in cooperating towards the goals of community policing, of addressing perceptions of fear and issues that can bring to crime, et cetera, et cetera, especially issues linked with drugs, uh, which are quite present in, in, in the territory of the Alta Lisboa. Once again, I believe that this is possible because municipal police is not criminal police in Lisbon. And this is where the third uh, line of issues raised by Dr. Neil is interesting. She um, mentioned examples when were in, in the UK, Manchester, if I remember, where, where community policing is done not by police officers, but by civilian staff, police community support officers. And here is where this blurring of competencies between police doing social work and civilians doing policy, policing is interesting within a broader pattern of the restructuring of uh, so urban and social policy in the last few decades. So the question we should always ask, is community policing about expanding the scope of policing, that is of increasing surveillance and enforcement in local communities, or is it about reframing police work away from traditional forms of policing. The latter seems to be to be generally desirable. That is the idea of leveraging community policing to expand social policy and structural forms of prevention. Once again, Portugal is an interesting exploratory field work because of the reason of being non-criminal police and that it was born in a context where the municipal government that is not formally responsible for security was still interested in finding non-policing way of doing security. The question is now that many other agencies in Lisbon, including for national polices like the Guardia Nacional Republicana, are trying to do community policing, whether is it possible to expand Lisbon's community policing toward 
a wider scale or whether forms of community policing that are in fact not community policing may from the top down problematize the work of uh, in Lisbon. And so challenges, challenges to which I think Monica will respond in, in the next uh, half an hour. Uh, the first is this relation between community policing as something that happens in community and interinstitutional conversation, putting together various actors and organizations that are present in a territory. In the case I studied in Alta de Lisboa, but as you will see in many other neighborhoods where community policing in Lisbon has responded. Second, and this is where the CCI project has been working specifically in Lisbon, is internal pressures. Uh, like I said, community policing in Lisbon worked because there was an environment where there were not pressures for police to do police work old school. But when leadership changes, it may happen again that community policing starts not be considered again within the police remit. And it seems uh, that in Lisbon, this challenge is emerging while community policing is expanding. When it was just one territory with two officers assigned to it, it was quite easy to leave community policing be. Now that it's growing, the plan is going beyond 10 districts and there is a more a, a higher request in terms of organizational requests and in terms of human resources to be given to community policing this is where higher ranking officers may start to see community policing as a problem as something that takes officers from real police work and this in general is a problem in my view with the issue of doing policy uh, policy through projects and pilots. Community policy in Lisbon started as a pilot, a successful pilot, which is growing and is trying to become a policy at the municipal level, ultimately, hopefully. And this is where, when a pilot starts to become a policy, that conflict can happen within organization where the growth of this policy means a radical restructuring of the organization. And this is where Monica and their colleagues find the need to push the community policing approach, the participatory approach of community policing inside the municipal police and build awareness about the importance of community policing within the municipal police. But this is what Monica will tell you about. Marco, you there? <laughs> Everything's fine. Thanks a lot, Simone. Okay. <laughs> I make Monica's presenter, so I think she will start her presentation right now. Great, we can see you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Margot, for the invitation. Thank you, Simon, for this uh, great uh, framework and introduction. I'm going to share my screen. Yes, we can see your screen, but not the presentation yet. Is it okay now? Yes, great. Okay, so uh, I'll start. Um, hello, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you again. Uh, my name is Monica. I'm a sociologist. I work uh, for over uh, 10 years in the Lisbon Municipal Police uh, and on the field of prevention and in a community policing model. And today I'm going to present you uh, about what is the, the model that uh, Simon was making this preview and uh, also to share with you some of our findings from our participation in the cutting crime impact 
project. And now it has been helping us in how to improve the, the model. So, um, the Lisbon Community Policing Model, as it was firstly said, uh, it first began as a pilot experience. Uh, in the following uh, proximity policing experience in downtown Lisbon and in another commercial area where the Lisbon Municipal Police tried to, um, to develop strategies to work closely with the citizens and in this case with shopkeepers and in the tourist area. In 2009, it was started the to, to see if it was possible to build a, a more a community policing approach, a, an approach to police, policing where citizens and other partners from the community could, in cooperation with the police, could discuss and uh, think together about how, how to solve some of the problems that uh, could be addressing, addressed under this preventive model. So in 2009, we joined the, the community group in the Alta de Lisboa. Uh, the main reason was because it was both a territory with some, with some problems, with some security uh, problems, but at the same time, uh, it had also a very uh, big potential because it, has a, it had a very active uh, partnership. It was called the community group of Alta de Lisboa, CAL, and CACAL was already with a long experience in cooperating different partners, partners in the field to address local problems. So the idea was to present this, um, this idea of a community policing in the territory, but to be joint plan with this partnership. For that, we, uh, we had created uh, one year after we started in, in the CAL group, we started what we call the security group because it was already divided in groups to address uh, uh, employment uh, aspects or to address health problems. And we call one group to, be, to address security uh, concerns. So this is how it started the first security group. And, um, and that's uh, how we start to plan it. In this first uh, year and in these first two years, th that's when it took us uh, longer to, to plan it because we were, we're trying to see if it was possible or not because uh, people to participate, it wasn't very easy, especially when it deals with security aspects. Um, a lot of times uh, very, um, people think about security, always think, oh, that's something for the police to solve. But what we, at the time, what we tried to address was that security was much bigger and broader than crime. Crime is to be addressed by the police, but when we talk about security and safety, it's also of the responsibility of all society. And it was within this approach that the community policing model was presented and uh, to be uh, planned together with, uh, with this uh, security partnership to implement the, the going to the field of a community policing team. So uh, just to explain you briefly, so it's a preventive model, this community policing. So it's oriented towards the resolution of the security problems felt and discuss it by the, the population. Although when it has to do with crime related issues, we uh, it's from the responsibility as Simon has also presented of the national police. So this was a more preventive approach. Why do, how can we address problems that keep repeating and occurring in the same places? It was try to understand how could we prevent it or mitigate them together with other community actors um, that could have a special um, role also in, in tackling those uh, problems that made people feel unsafe and insecure. So it was also important when we started this partnership that it was the 
to understand that it was both both the responsibility not only of the police but of the community all to feel as co-producers of community safety so uh, very uh, so it there in Alta de Lisboa, we developed the methodology and it mainly consists in four steps. Uh, a first step is to develop a local partnership. It's important to, uh, to plan it together with community members to, to understand what are the main concerns. So it, in Alta de Lisboa, we, had, we started with 12 partners, but it depends in the new uh, neighborhoods what are the key actors that can be uh, that can cooperate with the municipal police to start planning these projects but the first step is also to have a partnership and to plan together the goals the mission what are the problems to be addressed and it, this is the second step it's to to elaborate uh, and to undertake a local security diagnostic there are a lot of uh, theses and studies already sometimes uh, that uh, mention and talk about security aspects in the certain neighborhood. What we try to do is to combine them to learn what already exists and listening to the community. We start with focus groups or we take some community events not only to share what is this model of community policing, what is this preventive model, but also to understand what are the community concerns. And by this, we, the, the, the security group that uh, uh, conveys in a monthly basis, it's to plan the, this uh, coming of the new community policing team to the territory. So, in the second step, it's to understand what are the diagnostic of the security situation. This is uh, another example in the field. We can take a community event or we can ask different partners and um, the residents of the neighborhood about what is the, their concerns. The third step, it's about the creating and building the profile, the desirable profile of the police officers. It is important uh, for us to understand what would the residents expect from the police? What, what, how they idealize what should be the police role in their neighborhood? So a third step is to understand that. It's to understand is to talk with the elderly people, with children, with youngsters. It's, try, it's to involve our partners and try to understand what should be uh, known by the future police officers to go to that neighborhood. What should be their features? This is just a broad example about some of those that sometimes people share. But in each new territory, there is a different profile and this is a guideline for us inside the police organization when we make the selection process, take into account those main aspects that for community are very important that, that police officers should have. In the fourth step, uh, we do the training. What started when we were making in Alta de Lisboa in the first designing of this methodology the first training we have done it inside the police organization uh, these days over a decade ago um, we do the training in the neighborhoods together with the partners where both police officers and uh, uh, other partners social workers prof other professionals from the municipality for instance, from key areas there are important to address some of the problems that were uh, that were known in the diagnostic phase, for instance, taking into account the maintenance of the space, the lightning, and all, all those competencies are from of the municipality. And in our case, being the municipal police a service of the inside the municipality, it's very important that through training as well, um, police officers know which should be the key um, partners that they can cooperate to address the, 
the problems that may be uh, identified by residents. So this is an important uh, step to build, uh, to know about the neighborhood. So the, this is the first time that the police officers are introduced to the neighborhood to learn about the, the environment. We use also the septed approach and to and to try to also uh, to be taking into account how the environment can impact also in the security uh, aspect of the neighborhood. And through this uh, moment during the training, we aim to have at the end a partnership, a more cohesive partnership that together with the new policing team can address those community security problems. So this is an overview of the methodology. Is these four steps that we have developed in Alta de Lisboa and we have been using since then, always adapted to each new neighborhood, but follows more or less the same uh, steps. At the end, that after uh, the training is finishing, finished, that's when the police, the community policing team goes to the field and that's when it starts to participate in the security group monthly meetings. So uh, currently we have eight neighborhoods with community policing in Lisbon and we are uh, currently also planning two more that probably will start also this year. Regarding the contributes of the CCI project to the community policing uh, in Lisbon and how through this uh, European uh, Commission funded project under the Horizon 2020 uh, that has this aim to uh, support, uh, um, to support uh, the, the organizations, police organizations uh, to address and to uh, find new tools and how to address security problems. So it was important to to, to, in the case of the Lisbon Municipal Police that works on community policing, to incorporate this methodology from the CCI project and try to develop and to implement and uh, improve it. So this is mainly the, it is a qualitative research methodology, some of which uh, we have already been in use. So it's very much in line with the philosophy of what was being done under the community policing. But it was very interesting, this bottom-up human-centered design approach. How indeed it is important to understand uh, the end user's needs and the, its requirements to find new solutions. So this uh, CCI methodology allow also to, when in contact with our uh, stakeholders and with the, with the residents, it was very important to, um, to find some new aspects and to learn some new aspects and how to address what were the main problems that we were finding under this model. So basically, when we make the research, uh, it was not only the planning phase, but how to understand how it works after the first planning phase. In the second phase, it's the foot patrol, by the, uh, usually by two officers, police officers, that they are in daily contact with the residents to address uh, public space problems that uh, made people feel unsafe also raising awareness activities, especially targeting vulnerable groups, and these uh, monthly meetings of the security group. It is very important to plan, to assess what has been being delivered in the field, and to have this moment each month to discuss together with partners about what are the challenges and how to overcome it together. So uh, under CCI, we have been uh, re understanding and making all this research. And one of the key aspects that, that it helped us to, to understand 
one of the problems, and it's not only in Lisbon, this is frequently and uh, occurs, and is that the frequent diversion of community policing officers to other police tasks. Uh, sometimes uh, and very often the police officers are perceived inside the police organization as because they are only on patrol and this preventive role allows them to be uh, diverted to other tasks. Usually they are the first teams to be uh, diverted to, to other tasks, which brings uh, problems in, to the community, especially when building this, this relationship with, with citizens for them and they very often say that it's very diffi difficult because if they don't know if they are going to be in the neighborhood the day after because they may, they may be diverted to other place sometimes this uh, can bring them and feeling that uh, it, it needs to to be it's a challenge and a difficulty for them to to do their their work in the neighborhood so under the, the CCI, what we felt it was it was the need of to change uh, the mindset, of, especially of senior police officers, those that make the, the decisions about who, where, which teams are to be diverted to other tasks. It was something that, although it was understood while interviewing those uh, senior police officers, that it has to do with priorities because uh, there was there are, they needed to to plan it and again it's not only in the Lisbon Municipal Police but human resources are always a constraint but indeed uh, it, it for the impact that this diversion of the police officers from community it bring a, a very big impact to the neighborhood. So what we found was that although this stressful relationship was key for the community policing, and although community by participating in the planning, they had this ownership of the community policing, it worked, but was still something missing. And uh, what it was felt under the design approach, and we call it the, this concept direction, because in the different range of problems that that we could address and to find a solution, we found it very important to address internally and to look inside the police organization and now to find a solution so that community policing officers and their work could be more valued and support. So, and this required also, and that's what we have been learning from the CCI research that the community participatory planning that we have and it was successful to the community, it wasn't enough. And we needed to do uh, somehow a, a, a similar path inside the police organization itself. So that's how we bring to, to design the, one of the solutions. Uh, it was the, as we call it, the community policing in Lisbon Safer Communities Toolkit. It is a, a, a specific set of communication and planning instruments that has the main goal to engage key decision makers, especially senior police officers, in the delivery of the community policing team. So it was important, just as the community partners feel the ownership of the project, because it was not only the community policing of the municipal police, but it was of all the partnership. The same um, path, it was needed to be made from internally, especially when we have new senior police officers that are coming to work inside the municipal police and may not be so familiar with, um, with the, the philosophy of these projects. So uh, this wa was our starting point to design the solution to address and to prevent the to be, for the community policing officers to be diverted. And uh, we, it was in collaboration with our partner, with LOBA, um, uh, one of the partners from CCI, and in collaboration with the University of Salford, and how to develop. Um, an image, a logo that it, it re, 
it give uh, and allowed community policing in Lisbon also to have uh, to be recognized and this and also to make it more professional at senior police officers eyes so in that uh, order we have developed this toolkit with different materials that I'm going to, to present uh, in the following this uh, and it was specifically specifically designed for senior police officers but to other key decision makers for community policing officers and other stakeholders but the main goal was also always how to involve in the planning the decision makers so uh, one of the compo components it's a brochure that as especially uh, it was produced with the inputs of the of the end users both uh, the senior decision makers and community policing officers we try to involve all the inside the police organization in developing these uh, materials also the besides the the brochure and to explain what is the community policing and to explain how these four steps uh, are needed to uh, to the ownership of the of the project by the community as well it was also uh, developed different materials digital materials that decision makers could use uh, sometimes they have meetings or they go to conferences and we develop a set of materials that police uh, senior police officers could very easily use to uh, to support the, the model. Also, uh, we develop a video with the testimonials of the, of the senior police officers. It was important for them also to participate and to buy in in the in this model of policing. And this is was also very important to have their contributes and to develop these communication tools by doing that it was also a way to of the ownership of the of this model because they were also giving their own uh, contributes and proposals so the digital brochure the template and one for us one of the key components of the kit it was the strategic planning sessions this was developed indeed to support what we had already made in the community with those planning sessions of the security group, it was important to have also inside the police organization this moment of planning, of thinking together about what should be the strategy for Lisbon and because uh, this is the expansion of the model, what are the limits what, and how it would be, could be addressed. So for that, uh, at the end of last year, and under CCI, we presented this tool and we started the first planning session, precisely to start to plan together with decision um, with the senior decision makers about what could be the strategic planning of the community policing. Some of the main uh, results, indeed, uh, from all the toolkits that it was distributed inside the police organization and it's available in the internet the video and the brochures but mainly we would like to highlight the strategic planning session they are the core of this involvement of the senior police officers through these moments and we had the uh, and we are following what it was planned under the design phase about the different moments and to introduce the contributes of the of the decision makers in different aspects of the of the model for instance new training strategies about the team selection process the expansion of the model to new uh, territories since we have been requested to go to other neighborhoods and also about for instance the criteria to select new neighborhoods this has have been uh, discussed, although uh, taking into account COVID-19 restrictions, it's not so simple to work in the, in the room, but it has been possible to make some uh, exchanges and to participate. 
Also, we, we have made uh, last year for the first time an online training. We had never made it before, but because we were in pandemic context and it was already in place in March, we had already everything prepared to start the training on community policing. So we postponed it and to deliver it in online and taking into account also the what we have been learning from the CCI research, for the first time, we had a senior police officer also giving the training. Usually it used to be more uh, at uh, more uh, level of the supervisors on community policing or community policing peers that also contribute uh, as trainers to the, to the community policing training course. But for the first time, we have a senior police officer also. So this uh, um, F, uh, the tool, and we have been learning that it helped changing some of the perceptions. Uh, and, and we have been understanding that for senior police officers, they are feeling more engaged. And through this process of designing and prototyping together, making all these different steps, it helped also for them to be involved under the community policing and um, also to trying to disconstruct these uh, um, different and conflicting roles between the real the what is considered the real police work and the community policing role um, work as a social work and the more just the same as it happens in community with our partners the more people feel involved and commit with the, with the process, the better they are open to understand it and to contribute and to, um, and to, to value it. So the ownership process depends a lot on this engagement and uh, this participation in the planning. So um, these are the main, uh, what we have also, these communication tools also allow it for a lot of uh, both police and non-police elements from the municipal police. They now know better about the community policing model because sometimes even inside the police uh, organization, it's a non. So it, it helped also in that, uh, in that area. And also it was, I like it because we have uh, made uh, evaluation about what people uh, felt and uh, how they evaluate the, the toolkit and also the quality of the designs and of the materials were considered also to be positive for the police image. So, uh, and to finalize, just to share that um, and again taking uh, the words that Simone were saying from the beginning, Sometimes this is indeed a bottom-up approach. It started from a pilot to, and now it's in the at level of policy for, for the city. It is one of the goals from the government, uh, local government plan. And indeed, these materials have helped also to um, somehow to, as a, a way to, to explain the model. Sometimes it's not easy to uh, explain how important it is this participatory planning process for people to uh, develop this ownership and to be indeed a community policing where both police and community are involved and uh, try to have an active participation. But being also the need of the police organization to to feel that and to be open to those contributions from community, these tools also help to make that uh, communication process to be more accurate and to be um, this more professional way of sharing the, the model. And uh, for now, is this what I would like to share with you? Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation, uh, Monica. Um, and Simona, of course, for framing the concept of community policing um, and the context in which it is applied in Lisbon, um, starting with the Latin origins of the word community, a shared responsibility, 
which I think is clearly exemplified by the Lisbon um, community policing model, which Monica presented. Um, like you said, Monica, security is bigger than crime. It's a responsibility of the community, isn't it? Not just the police. Um, so these local partnerships, the security groups are really key to this and the success of the model. So at our last webinar, um, we explored the UK perspective on neighbourhood or community policing um, with Dr. Megan O'Neill and Dr. Roberta Signori. And the topic of hierarchy in police organisations came up. Um, and this week, you know, Monica and Simone have given us the Lisbon perspective clearly a very different model of community policing in that it sits within the municipal police, um, which differs to traditional policing. Um, but I couldn't help but notice some similarities when it comes to hierarchy um, and policing priorities. Um, so in light of this, um, which strategies should or could be considered to engage police organisations or relevant decision makers within the organisation in the participatory planning of community policing to ensure its support over time. Is that for me? I think, I think I, either of you are well placed to answer that question. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's quite interesting, exactly in terms that in some ways the, the success of the Lisbon model is due to the fact that it's a police which is not 100% a police, but some of the challenges come from the fact that it's a police which is still made of police uh, high-ranking officers who are trained in police, who work in national criminal police and then they move for some period of time usually if I'm not wrong to the municipal police. So that will be, you know, the question will be, is police the problem? And uh, you know that's I think is is a question a productive question in terms of thinking that these things that we th that, that we think that work not they they put in crisis many of the structural dimensions of our policies historically uh, taught and built and so in terms of police reforms for me community policing is real lens to 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 rethink policing uh, writ large. And so let's see how Monica and their colleagues will be able you know, to push this, this transformation from the bottom up. I think it will really be important to have large national political conversations on policing in wider terms in order to better accommodate, in order for these institutions to better accommodate this type of programs, which we all agree that are among the programs that work the best that police does. Monica, what, what do you think about that? <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Y yes, uh, and taking these last comments, uh, indeed, uh, what I've been uh, experienced from these last years, uh, as long as the community policing is going to be uh, expanded and we have bigger and bigger challenges because indeed just as you were saying in the beginning it was just two police officers in the neighborhood now uh, they, they are, it's requiring for inside the police organization it's more needs more resources also which requires this balancing between different approaches to Lisbon needs in terms of the delivery of the municipal police and how to combine them but um, it, one of the things that sometimes because our national level it's proximity policing that's what the national police uh, uses and it has been very interesting to to see how they, these both mo models can be complemented in the neighborhood because proximity model uh, policing works on crime also in prevention but deals with crime aspects and Community policing in Lisbon deals very much with public space problems that have to do with the competencies of the municipality and also and victims not to be vulnerable to crime or how to, to make both public space and uh, people less vulnerable. And this complements very well in addressing those, um, those security um, aspects and needs of to to make uh, neighborhoods safer 
Another thing that I found it's um, important uh, is to, to in, in fact, to include this participatory approach inside the police organization. Because one of the main constraints has to do with time. It's very difficult for police officers because it's very, time has to be very well spent because there are always urgencies to, uh, to be addressed in the city. And in, in fact, it's really complex to how to, um, to manage all the human resources to address the different uh, uh, needs in the dynamic city with different, and, uh, with different security problems. But because usually, and by our experience, community policing teams are very, um, are very much diverted because not only, and this we learned also from the CCI research, what, which was very interesting, it's not only because they are more in preventing, in uh, patrolling a neighborhood in a preventive way, so they can be, it's not a specific task, so they can be um, addressed it to others, but sometimes because these community policing officers develop over time a very close relationship with different partners they learn how to address even uh, taking into account the language they know very much how to refer and to signalize for instance on homeless issues on drug users issues they have training together with the local partners and the, this uh, partnership has been sustained over time so these community policing officers have really a, a set of skills that are very beneficial for the inside the police organization when when there is um, like a problem to be addressed it's more sensitive problem to be handled uh, they always choose these community policing teams so this is not only they're not diverted only because the lack of resources and to be more easy to 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 put them in in with another task but also because of these skills and competencies that this kind of policing um, made this police officer develop on the police officers so this is like uh, um, it's also beneficial, but at the same time, it's a constraint because they are more required to do other tasks, more um, especially taking into account complex problems. So they are more used to that, which brings us the problem. Yes, if they are diverted, then they cannot be in the neighborhood. So it's not easy. And another thing, it's very important during training of especially senior police officers, but also other police officers inside the organization how to understand what is this model and to share and also to incorporate contributions not only from top uh, from top decision makers but also from peers that also yeah. are one of the sometimes the aspects that can be but I just just wanted to ask Monica because obviously the, the the tool you developed within the frame of the CCI project is very specific to Lisbon, but you know have have other you know you're now busy with implementation and dissemination. Have have other regions or cities or police forces expressed any interest in Lisbon's approach to community policing? Um, and might the tools from CCI be useful in generating more interest? Yes, we, we have been developing this model and sharing it in uh, because we have both uh, partnerships, not only local, but uh, also at the international level. And sometimes it's very common to have different police organizations, not so much now in pandemic context, but before. And from other police organizations, they came here to understand the, the model and we besides the other uh, areas of the municipal police we also share our model of community policing so the one of the aspects also when we were developing the tool was also it's a good way to also share the model for instance the brochure we are making uh, to in the english version as well to make it easier for us also to to share the to share the model 
And after we have made the launch event uh, last year, at the end of last year, some of the colleagues from the police, they said that other, because we make both present and online, face-to-face -face and online, have said that some other colleagues from other police organization have asked some of the materials, for instance. So I think Absolutely, it yeah. could be, yes, although it is specifically, but the concept itself, it could be shared. Absolutely, I think so. It's it's obviously a very specific model in Lisbon, and this is an EU project. But like Simone, you've you've worked in in, in Memphis. I mean, potentially this is something that, that that could obviously go further than Europe, hopefully, and uh, more people can 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 learn from from the CCI project and the tool that you developed in Lisbon. Uh, well, I mean, I think that the point is that there are some institutional constraints which are very crucial. For instance, one of the things I identified within, within these comparative studies is the fact that security is not a local competence in Portugal somehow makes the politics of security at the local level less uh, tense. While in, in a context like Memphis, you know, the mayor has at the same time the responsibility to defend the population and to do any number of other things. So there is a direct competition for resources between social policy departments and policing. While in Lisbon, since security is a national competence, so if you are concerned with that, you should address your concerns with the national government. At the local level, there is somehow less pressure to do aggressive policing, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So in, in this sense, I think that these examples show that some is, the, the multi-level organizational government is very relevant on this and this for me problematizes some of the idea that if we could just you know train police officers better in context like the us everything will be solved training is important definitely but there are bigger you know more structural issues of how government is organized that are that are, that, that are crucial so you know the reform needs to be done at in more structural ways, in more structural dimensions, in, in many instances. So, could this help? Definitely. But I think it, it would help if then at the local level they would be able to push for systematic, significant reforms at at the higher level in, in context like the US, especially. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Monica and Simone. I see Margot has joined us, so I will hand over to her to close the webinar. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. I'm so sorry to interrupt this interesting discussion, but unfortunately the time is over. <laughs> so, so sorry for that. Uh, thanks to for, for moderating um, to Dagmar. Thanks to all of you for the, the attendees, for the interesting questions, which make these, this discussion that interesting. And of course, thanks to Monica and Simone for these interesting presentations and that you given us some insights into um, yeah, community policing in, in Lisbon especially and the challenges you are facing there and of course above all the solutions. Uh, one solution you've found to, to tackle this and um, yeah so it's um, for me it's just left to say that the last or the next not the last but the next webinar in this uh, series will take place in June. We will provide further information on this as soon as possible. And in the meantime, in the meantime I would like to invite uh, all of you to visit the CCI website, um, which is, in my opinion, very, very nicely designed. And it's really fun to, uh, to look around. Of course, you are... Um, invited to subscribe to the CCI newsletter so you stay informed about the further webinars or of course visit the DPT website for further information and I think that's it for today thanks a lot to all of you and I hope to welcome you again in our next webinar goodbye bye thank you bye thanks thank you bye bye